This is N2 Electrical Trade Theory, and we'll be taking a look at the most recent exam paper for August 2020. Please remember to like and to share these videos to support this YouTube channel. Cables can carry fault currents that are much higher than their rated value. Name three factors that affect the permissible fault current that a cable can carry. Well, here we've got the formula to help us answer this question. We will need to know the conductor insulation factor the cross-sectional area, and the time that the current flows. Determine the full load line current of a 380 volt, 60 kilowatt, three-phase motor that has a full load power factor of 0, 0,8. Because it's a three-phase motor, we're dealing with square root 3 inside our equation. Now, to manipulate the equation to get the full load current on its own, it'll be power over square root 3, the line voltage, and the power factor. The power multiplied by 1,000 gives us 60,000 watts divided by square root 3, the line voltage of 380, and a power factor of 0, 0,8. Therefore, the full load current is 113,95 amps. Name four types of inductive loads used in AC circuits. We get motors, transformers, relays, and contactors. In which units is apparent power measured? Well, transformers have a rating measured in volts amps or kilovolts amps. Indicate whether the following are true or false. The casing of a circuit breaker is molded glass fiber, and that is false. It is usually made out of bakelite. A circuit breaker can be used as a disconnector, that is true. Contacts in a circuit breaker are made from silver tungsten. And that is true. Fill in the missing words in this table. We need to give the operation, function, and use of relays and contactors. They are both operated remotely. And they are both automatically opened or closed in a circuit. The, the use for a relay it is used for the headlamps of your car. For a contactor, it is mainly used to switch on AC induction motors. List three types of joints used to join conductors in high voltage applications. We get hot shrink joint, cold shrink joint, and resin joint with taped ends. Complete the following sentence. The direction of current through the field windings of a compound motor is to be reversed. Therefore, the current through both the field winding and the armature will also be reversed. Give one disadvantage of a series motor. It is dangerously high speed at no load conditions. Let's fully label the construction of a DC motor. We have the yoke, the flux, the field winding, the pole shoe, the pole core, and the armature assembly and armature windings. Draw a labeled circuit of a series motor. Well, we have a series winding connected in series with the armature. Name two types of windings that are found on capacitor start, capacitor run induction motors. We get the start winding and the run winding. Explain the purpose of a centrifugal switch as used in single phase induction motors. Well, the centrifugal switch will disconnect the start winding once the motor reaches operational speed. With regards to AC motors, explain what is meant by the stator and rotor. The stator is the stationary part of the machine, and the rotor is the rotating part of the machine. Explain why the rotor of an induction motor cannot rotate at synchronous speed. There needs to be a difference between rotor speed and synchronous speed in order to generate EMF, and this is known as slip. Compare the following types of rotors with regards to their construction. A squirrel cage rotor is made from rotor bars, and a wounded type rotor is made from rotor windings. Name the advantages of three phase motors. Three phase motors tend to be smaller, cheaper, they're more efficient, they have a high starting torque, and they're also self-starting. Explain how the following are earthed. 
Four Transformers, the steel frame and the stark connection on the star winding is Earth. Four overhead lines, the cable at the highest point is Earth, as well as the pylons connected to ground. For the substation, the Earth continuity conductor is connected to ground and any steel structure is also connected to the Earth. What do we mean by the term floating Earth? It has a zero volt connection and is also there is no connection to the Earth continuity conductor. Give three reasons why the supply is neutral conductor in a low voltage system is Earth. It is to provide a return path for Earth volts to reduce touch voltage and to have the neutral in the Earth come to the same potential. Explain how time delay is obtained with a bimetal overload relay. It is the time that it takes for the bimetal strip to heat up, to bend out of shape and trip the contacts. Briefly explain the effect of ambient temperature on the accuracy of a thermal overload relay. Well, where the ambient temperature is low, we will find that the time delay increases. Where the ambient temperature is high, we find that the time delay decreases. The earth leakage device has a test button that ensures the correct operation of earth protection. Explain the condition that exists and the resulting action when the test button is pushed. Well, it simulates a fault current of 30 milliamps. It will cause the tripping circuit to be activated and the circuit will be disconnected from the supply. Explain the function of an energy meter. The energy meter is, me is used to measure the amount of energy consumed per hour. The two coils that a watt meter uses in a single phase system consist of the current coil and the voltage coil. Give two types of watt meters. We get the dynameter type and the induction type. Yeah, we have a transformer calculation for single phase transformers. The turns ratio of a single phase transformer is 25 to 1. Therefore, it is a step down transformer. Now, in question 8.1.1, we need to calculate the secondary voltage if the primary voltage is 220 volts. And in question 8.1.2, what is the input current if the transformer delivers 10 amps to the secondary side? Well, the first thing to do is to draw your single phase transformer and to note that the ratio is 25 is to 1. So to calculate the secondary voltage, we're going to use the ratio to help us. Now the equation states V1 over V2. If we substitute our ratio in, 25 on the primary and 1 on the secondary. Now if we have 220 volts on the primary, what will be the secondary voltage? And here we can use cross multiplication. Therefore, the secondary voltage will be 8,8 .8 volts. To calculate the input current, if the transformer delivers 10 amps to the secondary side, now in this equation, we have I2 over I1. However, the ratio stays exactly the same as 25 on the primary and 1 on the secondary. If we are delivering 10 amps to the secondary side, how much will the primary current be? Once again, we can use a little bit of cross multiplication. Therefore, the primary current is 0, 0,4 amps. Okay, for our final calculation for a three-phase transformer, now there's a little bit of a trick to this question. A three-phase delta-delta transformer is connected to a 2,2 kilovolt supply, and the secondary phase voltage is 220. So if you look at my circuit diagram, you'll notice that we have delta on the primary and delta on the secondary. Now, in order to calculate the primary phase voltage, we'll notice that if you look at the formulas for the primary side, VL is equal to V phase. Therefore, the primary voltage and the primary line voltage is exactly the same. It is 2,200 volts. To calculate the secondary line voltage, and once again, we've got delta on the secondary side. So once again, VL is equal to V phase. Therefore, the secondary side is also 220 volts. 
Okay, our last question. Calculate the primary phase current when it draws 120 amps from the supply. Now, if we look at our equation, you'll notice that IL is equal to square root 3 times R phase. So to calculate R phase 1, it'll be IL1 over square root 3. Therefore, 120 amps divided by square root 3 will give us a phase current of 69,282 amps. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to share these videos. Thank you.